so scared that she is certain Then her eyes looks in her eyes She's awed by his tiny smile Her burden no longer she's strong In the blessing of the newborn child your face look up in wonder Mary all oh, your doubt is melting away lift your face do you wonder Lord I wonder why you'd give your son for me child herself no pressure Mary did you think you'd be the one you bowed low love overflows born in favor to have the son Mary bring your mighty key in a baby's eyes Joy is ringing The angels singing Peace on earth Fills the skies Lift your face Look up and wonder Mary, all oh, your doubt Is melting away Lift your face your face look up in wonder Mary all oh, your doubt is melting away lift your face oh do you wonder Lord I wonder why you give your son for me Merry Christmas, friends. This is Misty Phillip, host of the By His Grace podcast and founder of Spark Media. In this special Christmas episode, you will hear from several different podcasters that are part of the Spark Collective who've come together to encourage you with a special Christmas message. Christmas is one of the most important holidays of the year. For Christians, the true meaning of Christmas is the celebration of the Savior, Jesus Christ. And it is my prayer that wherever you are this Christmas, that you would know the height and the depth and the breadth of the love of Christ. Have a merry Christmas, a blessed and wondrous Christmas. Hi, I'm Wendy Pett with the Visibly Fit Podcast, where you'll learn how to be fit mind, body, and spirit. And I love this time of year. Merry Christmas. It is such a special time to celebrate our Lord and Savior, His birth. Uh, we celebrate during this, this season. And it's just so special. I have such incredible memories growing up. I hope you do too. My mom always did Christmas really big. Tons of gifts under the Christmas tree. And she was always baking. And there's always these wonderful aromas in the air uh, from her cooking and baking. And we always had Christmas music playing in the background. And just my senses are heightened this time of year. And so I hope yours are too. And I hope there are special memories around those senses of, of sight and, and smell and, and what you've heard, because it is such a wonderful time of year. I always think of the three wise men and how they followed that North Star with great faith. And they persevered to, to find Jesus. And they presented him with incredible gifts. 
And I think how we can do the very same thing even now. We can present him with gifts of, of our gratitude, gifts of, of worship and praise, and gifts of, of just thanksgiving, gifts of, of love and letting his light shine through us to others. And so that is what we get to do in this season. It's no, no gift under the tree matters. Uh, compared to what Jesus gifted us with, and that is uh, eternal life. And he came into this world and um, sacrificed his life for us uh, in the end. And so we get to celebrate and praise him. So I, I pray that you have just a special holiday time, a special Christmas season, and um, that the Christ within the Christ, Christmas, Christmas um, really shines bright in all that you do, all that you say, and, and um, that people even at the, the grocery store or uh, out on the street will see Christ in you this season. So Merry Christmas to you and your family. Be blessed. As a private investigator, I often need to find people. And I do that a lot by finding family members. Christmas, to me, is all about family. So I want to take a look at the family of Jesus. I'm Lori Morrison, and I host the Unlovely Truth Podcast, where we explore the intersection of faith and true crime. So let's investigate just who this child, born in a stable in Bethlehem, truly is by learning more about his family. His earthly parents... Joseph and Mary knew exactly who he was, because each of them had an angel visit them and tell them. Same with the wise men. So how can we really know who this tiny baby is? It's all spelled out for us in the pages of Scripture. There are literally hundreds of prophecies about Jesus in the Old Testament. Let's talk about just three of them that teach us about the family of Jesus. Genesis 49.10 says, The scepter will not depart from Judah, nor the ruler's staff from between his feet, until he to whom it belongs shall come, and the obedience of the nations shall be his. Now, scepters are used by kings and rulers, and this particular one belongs to someone from the house of Judah, according to Jacob, as he's blessing his sons. We know from the book of Luke that Jesus is descended from the tribe of Judah. Chapter 3 gives a very detailed account of Jesus' family history in verses 23 through 38. It mentions Joseph and Judah, and the chapter ends with the Son of God. The prophet Samuel spoke words from God to King David when he said in 2 Samuel chapter 7, verses 12 and 13, When your days are over and you rest with your ancestors, I will raise up your offspring to succeed you, your own flesh and blood and I will establish his kingdom. He is the one who will build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. Romans 1 verses 1 through 3 describes the fulfillment of Samuel's prophecy. Paul, a servant of Christ Jesus, called to be an apostle and set apart for the gospel of God, the gospel he promised beforehand through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures regarding his son, who as to his earthly life was a descendant of David. And of course, we all know who Jesus' mother is. The prophet Isaiah foretold in Isaiah 7:14, Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. Then when we flip over to Luke's account of Mary being told by the angel that she would deliver a child who would be the Son of God, it says that she asks how this could possibly happen since she is a virgin. And the angel replies in verse 35, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. How incredible is it that when we trust in Jesus to save us from our sin, we join his family. I hope that that thought and the happy celebrations you have with your family combine to give you and yours a very Merry Christmas. Hi, everyone. I'm Yvette Walker, the host of the Positively Joy podcast, and I love Christmas. It is such a special time to me, and I hold such fond memories of going to Midnight Mass with my family in Chicago. 
I love singing the traditional Christmas carols and hearing the nativity story read aloud in church. And then, when you emerge from that nighttime service into the cold, clear air, huh, it just feels like Christmas. Since then, I've moved around a lot, and I'm no longer in Chicago. I'm in Oklahoma, where sometimes the air is chilled on Christmas Eve, but sometimes not. In Oklahoma, Christmas is beautiful, however. I decorate the house, and I still go to, if not midnight mass, an evening service that thrills me all the same. When I think of Christmas, I think of Mary and her burden that became a blessing. I think that led me to co-write the song Wonder that you are hearing on this broadcast and the fact that she bowed low to be raised high as the mother of the Christ. That's what Christmas is all about, isn't it? The wonder of our Lord and how God gave his son to us. I'd like to read the lyrics to Wonder, and I ask you to reflect on the message of the servanthood and sacrifice of Mary. The star hangs high, the angels sigh. There's a girl who carries a burden. Her little family is growing, she's showing. So scared of that she's certain. Then he arrives and looks in her eyes. She's awed by his tiny smile. Her burden no longer, she's stronger in the blessing of the newborn child. Lift your face, look up in wonder. Mary, all your doubt is melting away. Lift your face, look up in wonder. Lord, I wonder why you'd give your son for me. Just a child herself, no pressure. Mary, did you think you'd be the one? You bowed low, love overflows, born and favored to have the son. Mary, bring your mighty king, our future in a baby's eyes. Joy is ringing, angels singing, peace on earth fills the skies. Lift your face, look up in wonder. Mary, all your doubt is melting away. Lift your face, look up in wonder. Lord, I wonder why you'd give your son for me. That song was co-written by my friend and writing partner, Ricky Ambergie and was sung by the amazing Alyssa Newton, who also wrote the music. I want to thank them for everything they contributed. Merry Christmas, everyone, and have a wonderful and blessed Noel. Well, hey there. Hello, everyone, and Merry, Merry Christmas to you. My name is Jan L. Burt. I am the host of the Burt Not Ernie Show podcast, and I am just so blessed to be a part of this special Christmas episode that Misty Phillip has put together for you this Christmas season. On my podcast, the Burt Not Ernie Show, I focus on getting the promises of God into the people of God, which is really where they belong. God's promises really, really are for you. And they really, really are for you right now, not just for tomorrow. They're for you today. So as I read a few verses from the Old Testament book of Isaiah, I would like to um, kind of pray them over you as I read. So to everyone who listens to this podcast episode, please know this is God's promise to you. And I have prayed it over you for this Christmas season. This, my friend, this is what God has done for you in Jesus. And this is indeed your promise from the God most high who loves you so much this Christmas season. Isaiah 9 verses 6 and 7 say this, for to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. That, my friend, is for you this Christmas season. Lord bless you, and may you have a truly, truly wonderful Christmas and a truly, truly blessed new year. 
Hey there, I'm Heather Creekmore from the Compared to Who Show. We're a show dedicated to helping women who struggle with body image and comparison issues. Well, Merry Christmas. I don't know about you, but the holiday season can be a challenge, especially if you struggle with body image or comparison issues. I mean, the holiday foods don't make my scale happy. Always wondering if what I've bought for a gift is enough. Our Christmas lights pale in comparison to my neighbors. The list goes on and on. There are so many ways we can compare ourselves and our lives to those around us. And really, why do we do it? There's so many reasons. I've written about them in my book called The Burden of Better. Part of it is we just want to know if we're really enough. Now that question, am I enough, that's been explored on Instagram and various memes ad nauseum. I'm not here to tell you today that same old stale message of you're enough, just believe in yourself. I really don't think that's the gospel. But what I love is how the Christmas season is the perfect opportunity to recognize where our true worth comes from. And I'll tell you how I discovered it. I was bebopping around my house to Mariah Carey, All I Want for Christmas is You, one of my favorite Christmas songs. But I was listening to a mix and the song, Oh Holy Night, came on. Now friends, I have heard this song hundreds of times. I have sang it at church and along with the radio. I know this very common Christmas song, but for some reason, there was a line that stuck out to me like never before when I heard it. And the line goes like this, till he appeared and the soul felt its worth. You see, it's not really about whether or not I'm enough whether or not I look the part at the holiday party, whether or not our Christmas decorations look like something Chip and Joanna Gaines would have done. No, it's not really about being enough according to the world's standards. Instead, it's about my soul feeling its worth. And that comes from only one place. That comes from Jesus. And at this time of the year, we can celebrate his arrival. You see, on those cold December days, when the dressing room mirror tells me I'm not good enough, or when the scale tells me I'm losing my battle, my soul can still feel worthy. Christmas frees me from needing the approval of the scale or the mirror. Because he appeared, I don't need to compare myself to others. Because he appeared, I don't have to strive to match a certain standard of beauty. Because he appeared, I am free to enjoy the holidays knowing I am already accepted. You see, only Jesus's birth defines my worth. I hope that encourages you this Christmas. Merry Christmas, friends. This is Michelle saunders Gutch, CEO and founder of Altered Stories Ministry and the chief storyteller host of the Altered Story Show. I love that my podcast is part of the Spark Media Network. So, friends, what does Christmas mean to me? As a Christian, Christmas is a time of spiritual reflection on the important foundations of my Christian faith. It's a time to celebrate God's love for the world through the birth of his son, Jesus. The Bible tells of his birth hundreds of years before. Being a lover of God's stories, the Christmas story of the birth of Jesus recorded in Luke chapter 2 verses 4 through 19 is my favorite as it brings hope to all of us. Jesus came into the world as a baby to save us all. Because of this reason for the season, I truly take in the wonder and awe of the Christmas season. Ho, ho, no. Who needs Santa when we have God who is the best gift giver ever? Hey, this is Janie Terry with the Say So With Janie podcast on the Spark Media Network. 
Christmas is God's faithfulness to his promise of sending the perfect gift, Jesus Christ, born of a virgin, as predicted by the prophet Isaiah hundreds of years earlier. Emmanuel means God with us. God sent himself in human form because of his extreme love for us to always want to dwell with us. May you dwell in knowing that God loves you and longs to be with you, not only at Christmas, but always. God bless you. Hey, it's Erin Harrigan, host of the Hustle with Heart podcast, the podcast for Christian women in business who want to pursue success God's way with a word about escaping overwhelm and finding serenity this season. With the chaos and commercialism of the Christmas season, I want to encourage you that you can use four keys to unlock serenity. The first is allowing the Lord to define what the season is and define what it means for you and your family. And he's already done that with the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To allow the Lord to direct you in the gifts that you're buying and the meals that you're preparing and the decorating, all of it, to keep your intentions focused on shining Christ's light. To put a discipline in place around your work this season so that you can work faithfully and rest faithfully. And finally, to allow the Holy Spirit to develop the Christmas spirit within you throughout the season so that all with whom you come into contact can experience the Lord's peace and calm and serenity in you. I wish you all a very Merry Christmas and God bless you for the new year. Merry Christmas, y'all. This is Kim Stewart, host of the Book Marketing Mania podcast. Christmas to me means gift giving, but not the kind you buy with money, the kind you make with your heart. My mother-in-law set a beautiful example of this with her red plate tradition that we have carried into our family. It started with just because celebrations of a family member using a red plate at the dinner table and was quickly extended to show love to others outside our home as we deliver home-baked goods on a red plate at Christmas. Some years are tougher than others to pull not only the ingredients together, but the time it takes to prepare it all. Luke 638 says, give and you will receive. Your gift will return to you in full, pressed down, shaken together to make room for more, running over and poured into your lap. The amount you give will determine the amount you get back. Y'all, we've seen that come true each and every year. The time you put into giving to others through your heart is so worth it. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Hey friends, this is Dara Swift of the Fierce Calling Podcast. You know, there's something about children in the house at Christmas time that adds an extra measure of joy to the season. My heart yearns for those crack of dawn Christmas mornings when jumping beans would shake us awake, their Christmas list items wrapped and waiting beneath the tree, and this late night wrapping mama would roll out of bed and make those littles wait while I put on the coffee and popped cinnamon buns into the oven. I'd light the tree, give the okay, and standing camera ready, I would watch as they rushed by like the wind, wide-eyed and giggly, the likes of which you only experience once a year. But our seasons change, don't they? Time moves on, our littles grow up, and we mama birds must teach them to fly. While some may say our nests are empty, God encourages us that he has made everything beautiful in its time. In Ecclesiastes 3.11 And whatever the status of this mama bird's nest or yours, we can choose joy and we can choose to be glad. For although we may miss the seasons of old, God brings new seasons of life to experience. We can take comfort in remembering that those old seasons were once new too. In John 15, Jesus prepares his disciples for what was to come. He was leaving, and he knew it would be hard for them to bear. He told them what it meant to abide in the vine, bear much fruit, and how much he loved them. He told them all those things so his joy would be in them, that their joy may be full, because he would never leave them empty. And that's true for us too, friend. Jesus will never leave us empty. So young mamas, enjoy every moment, and know this, sleeping in on Christmas morning is overrated even if you just went to bed an hour before. And be careful not to blink, because all that talk about time going by quickly, it's not a cliche. So savor every moment and don't sweat the lack of quiet time. Your home will be quiet soon enough. So invite your littles into your moments with the Savior. And they say your nest is empty, mamas. Your nest is full. We can hang on to memories, but let's not miss the new ones waiting to be made. 
this is not the end of the story because the old story is not gone. It just stretches and grows and becomes something beautiful in its time. So let's change that phrase empty nest to plenty nest. Our plenty nests where abundance flows with a fullness of love, peace, and joy where the Holy Spirit dwells and Jesus is Lord. May your plenty nest be blessed this Christmas as you celebrate the Savior who makes our seasons beautiful and our joy full. Merry Christmas. Hi, I'm Tina Yeager, host of the Flourishment Podcast, and I'm here as part of the Spark Media Collective to share with you what Christmas means to me. I love that Christmas brings us hope in the midst of the darkest times. Most people think of Christmas for its Hallmark charms, its HGTV decorations, its Pinterest perfect meals, and all the things that should be exactly filled with the perfect form of our culture's happiness, wealth, success, all the material things that are supposed to comfort us, and yet they fall short. In the original nativity, Jesus came as the light of the world in the midst of a time that was darker than anything the world could ever compare to. In fact, John 1, even though it doesn't mention the nativity, tells us this. John 1.14 says, The Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us. We have seen His glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. And earlier in that chapter, it says, In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. In Him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. And here's the key that I want you to remember right now, in the midst of these dark times that we are facing, the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Friends, the darkness that's around us right now cannot, will not ever overcome the light of the Messiah that is born today in people who receive him that has been born for us. So that is our hope. God gave his only son to be our light, no matter how dark the darkness seems and nothing can overcome his hope and his light and his life within us. And we know that this was really dark around the people that were facing the tyranny of Herod and the tyranny of a Roman government. As dark as things seem now, they're not darker now than they were in those days when Caesar Augustus issued that decree that a census should be taken of the Roman world and people in poverty were forced to travel. And Joseph and Mary had to travel while Mary was very pregnant on a donkey. And when they traveled, they traveled a very long distance with very little in their stores to carry with them and to make them comfortable and well-fed. They were really in dire straits when they finally reached Bethlehem. And many scholars think that the cave that they stayed in might have been a cave that was a stable for sacrificial lambs. Now think about that for a moment. They stayed in the cleanest possible stable. They stayed where the shepherds who were shepherds of these sacrificial lambs potentially would easily find them to see the good news that the angels brought to them in the darkest moments of night. And here is this theme of light shining in the darkness that we see over and over again in the songs that we sing, like Silent Night, that was composed because there was a need. There was a, an organ that was broken and couldn't be fixed. And so this plaintive, wonderful song that we still sing today began in a small village in Austria by guitar. And O Holy Night also features this theme of the stars brightly shining and long lay the world in sin and error pining and then led by the light of faith serenely beaming with glowing hearts by his cradle we stand so led by the light 
of a star sweetly gleaming. Here came the wise men from the Orient land. That's a verse we don't normally sing from O Holy Night. And this song was written back in 1847 and was rejected by the bishops of that day as if they could squash this music that talks about the light in the darkness. And yet it's one of the most popular hymns that has endured for over 150 years now. So the light shines in the darkness. The darkness cannot overcome it. I pray that that gives you encouragement, that that gives you hope to hang on to. No matter how dark your days are, may the light of Christ bring you comfort and true and lasting joy. Merry Christmas. Hi, I'm Wendy Pett. And I'm Todd Isburner. And we have the Your Biggest Breakthrough podcast. So, Wendy, what does Christmas mean to you? Oh, well, Christmas means Jesus' birth, and it means being around family and friends and love and laughter and food and oh. all the wonderful things. <laughs> I, I love Decorations. That. Did you throw and, candy canes in there? Well, and we could. What yeah. about those stockings that you put in the fireplace? Stocking stuffers. Oh, I love uh, stockings. Huh? That's my favorite. Yeah. Stocking stuffers. Yeah. What does it mean to you? Wow. Okay. So I, I, I like all those images. Uh-huh. And Especially the Jesus one. Uh, well, I have a little different image in that regard. What? So everybody sees uh, little baby Jesus, meek and mild, celebrate his birthday and all of that, which yes. is which is good. That's what we're doing. We're celebrating his birthday. I view it a little differently. Uh oh. I I view it as an invasion with a declaration of war. Oh. I know that sounds a little a little out there. Okay. But let me just explain for a moment. Please, because, please do. <laughs> because God becomes a man and enters into our humanity here on planet Earth. Mm. And in a very real way, when he appeared, it was a declaration of war upon the kingdom mm. of darkness, because Jesus is the light. It's so good. And he has brought into existence an opportunity to know God, to come out of the kingdom of darkness, if you will, into yes. the kingdom of light. light. So I see even baby Jesus as a warrior king, ready to do battle on our behalf, so we didn't have to stay imprisoned in this kingdom of darkness. Oh, I love it. Okay, why you did do? I think of that? Well, no, that was just, so profound I, and I, wonderful. I, I, well, I, I think that's the way we have to think about it every single day. God, Absolutely. thank you, thank you for saving me, redeeming me, and bringing me into your light and your presence. Yeah, I think Jesus had his biggest breakthrough. <laughs> Never you're thought like, of it that way, like, but that's pretty yeah, good. Yes. On your biggest breakthrough. Of course. Here All we right. Go. I All get right. it. Let's do a whole show on that sometime. Let's do it. Let's do it. Angels we have heard on high, sweetly singing over the plains. Hey, I'm Shay. And I'm Michelle. And we're the Pantry Podcast. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Man, you know, when we get into the season of Christmas, it's a time of reflection, right? It's a time when God sends his son to bring in a method, a way of salvation. And as I was thinking about this, I, I came to Isaiah seven fourteen. the prophecy, how amazing is it that this was brought forward and it was prophesied like this is going to happen. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. He sent his son. God is with us. People got to walk with Christ, got to be with Christ, got to watch Christ be crucified for us. And I think Christmas brings in this beautiful ensemble of how that plays out. Yeah, it's amazingly humble how he came in. He, he laid in dirt for us. He was born amongst beasts for us to show his character, mm. to show that even though he is perfect and he is pure, we can access him because of what he did. He made himself accessible. And Christmas is not just a one and done kind of, okay, you wake up Christmas morning, thanks Jesus for being born, you close it up, you move on the next day. This is a very special time because there's this time, this whole season of anticipation that leads us along. And there's so many different things people have come up with over the centuries to continuously reflect back on that. There's the Advent countdowns, worship songs, decorations. There's all these things. They give you that trigger to reflect again and spend some time really understanding what it means that he came for us. Mm, so in this season, just reflect on Jesus. 
Hey, this is the Pantry Podcast. Merry Christmas.